if you are looking for the fast way to solve a system of equations, you have found it. You are in the right place. Really fast before we get started. There are a few ways to solve systems of equations. There's graphing, there's substitution, there's elimination, which we're doing here. If you need graphing or substitution, go ahead and check out those videos right over there. There's also a third video linked where I do all three um, ways in one video and I go pretty quickly. I'm going to be a little more detailed in this video telling you what I'm doing. Okay, let's get started. All right, elimination, fastest, easiest, favorite way. Okay, really fast before we get started, I want to explain what systems of equations means. Don't change the video, it'll be fast, okay? Stay with me. Okay, <laughs> if you are given this by your teacher and he or she says, tell me what X and Y equal, well, Every person in your class could come up with a different answer, right? We could have seven plus zero. We could have six plus one, five plus two. We could have negative eight plus one. Oh, wait, that's a lie. Positive eight plus a minus one. Oh my gosh, that's what I meant, okay? <laughs> but I think you get the point. Basically, you could keep going um, forever giving answers to this. Same here. You could do three minus zero. You could do... 5 minus 2, right? I don't think I need to keep going. I think you get the picture that I could just keep going, right? Okay. When they give you a system, they're giving you more than one equation and they want to know the answer that works for X and Y in both cases, okay? So with this one, whereas it's a pretty simple set, we can figure out that it's 5 and 2, right? Because... If I have x equals 5 and y equals 2, 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 minus 2 is 3, right? So that's what they're looking for is the numbers that work for both, okay? Now when we get into things that are a little more complicated, it's not as easy to just figure it out. So we have these different strategies, okay? Now elimination is our fastest one, okay? When we solve a system of equations, there's three possible answers, types of answers, I should say. There is one solution, which we typically write as an ordered pair. You could get no solution. There could be no numbers that work and make both of these true, okay? Or you could have infinite solutions, okay? And we're going to talk about which each of those might look like, okay? Spoiler alert, both of these are going to be one solution, Okay, and then I'm going to show you two examples very quickly where we don't do the entire problem, but I show you what no solution and infinite solutions look like. So make sure you stick around for that because you're probably going to see those. Okay. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about elimination. Okay, now when we're doing elimination, somebody genius came up with this. We're basically combining these two equations. But what I want to have happen is when I combine them, I want one of the variables to completely cancel, okay? If you're like, what the crap is she talking about? Stick around, okay? Now, there's multiple ways I can do this. For this one in particular, I am going to multiply my top equation by three, okay? If you're like, where did she pull that out of? Like I said, stick around, okay? Remember, I can do anything I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides, right? I can add, subtract, multiply, divide, whatever, as long as I do it to both sides. But I want to pick things that will make my equation do what I want it to, to get closer to an answer. So if I multiply both these sides by three, it's going to help me get closer to my answer and I'll show you why, okay? When I multiply this whole side by three, I need to make sure I distribute that in, which just means the three is being multiplied to both of them, okay? So three times a negative X gives me negative three X, okay? Three times Y gives me plus three Y equals, and then we've got three times one, which is three, okay? Now this is just this written a different way, okay? So I'm gonna kind of say, oh, we're done with you for a second. So now I'm combining these two equations, okay? These are, this is still my system of equations. This one just looks a little different, okay? So what do I mean by combining these? I mean, 
I'm going to do 3x minus 3x. Oh, that leaves me with zero x's. So I'm just not going to write anything. Those go away. That was my whole goal. All right, then I've got 1y here plus 3y. That gives me 4y. Okay. Then I've got 13 plus 3. That gives me 16. These are being multiplied, so I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. That goes away, so I'm left with y equals 4. Look, I already have my y. Now we just need the x. We're halfway there. Okay, I'll stop singing. That's probably like you're rolling your eyes at me. That's okay. All right, now I just take this y and I plug it in for any of these y's. I can plug it in here, here, or here. Um, I'm going to pick this top one just because it looks a little more friendly. So this top equation was negative x plus y equals 1. So I'm going to plug 4 in for y. So negative x plus 4 equals 1. Okay, my whole goal is to get x alone. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides to get that to go away. So I've got negative x equals, if I have a dollar, I want to buy something for four dollars. I'm three dollars short, right? So negative three. Okay, you might think you're done, but not quite. We don't want our x to be negative. So to get rid of that, we're just going to multiply both sides by a negative one. Remember, as long as I do it to both sides, fair game. If I multiply that, all it does is switch the signs. So I'm going to have x equals positive three. Look at that. Your teacher might want it written as an ordered pair. If so, just make sure you write the x first. So it's going to be three, four. All right, what does that mean? That means if I plug these in, it should work for both of them. So negative three plus four equals one. Yes, it does. Three times three is nine plus four is 13. Yes, so it worked for both of them. Wonderful. Okay. If we were to graph these, they would cross at three, four. All right. Okay. Let's do another example. Okay. Here is this system. I want to get one of my variables to cancel. It can be X or Y. Um, I'm kind of thinking I want my Y's to cancel. So if I have a negative two Y, the thing that will make negative 2y cancel is positive 2y, right? So right now I have a negative y. How do I make a negative y multiply it by something to make it 2y? Well, I know a negative times a negative gives me positive. So I'm going to have to multiply it by something negative. And there's really like a 1 here. And 1 times 2 is 2, right? So negative y times negative 2 is going to give me 2y, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to multiply this side and this side by negative 2. Okay. So then if I multiply, make sure that goes to both of them. So I get negative 2 times 2x. While a negative times a positive is negative, 2 times 2 is 4. Don't forget the x. Okay. Negative 2 times negative y. Negative times a negative is positive. Two times y, one y is two y. Ooh, that's what we wanted, right? That equals negative two times negative two is a positive four, okay? So this is the second equation in my system of equations. I wanna combine it with this one. So I'm just gonna rewrite that one exactly how it is. Okay, now I'm combining these. 5x minus 4x just leaves me with 1x. And then negative y plus 2y, yay, they go away. That's what I wanted to happen. So x equals 1 plus 4 is 5. Look, we already have our x. It's a little faster than graphing it, right? Not dissing on graphing. It's just faster. All right. So now I have x equals 5. So I can plug that in for this x, this x, this x, whatever I want. Um, I think I'm going to plug it into this one. So I'm going to plug it into 2x minus y equals negative 2. Okay. So 2 times x, which is 5, minus y equals negative 2. 2 times 5 is 10, minus y equals negative 2. I want y all alone, so I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. So those go away. So over here, I'm left with negative y equals 
if I owe somebody $2 and then I borrow 10 more dollars from them, I am in debt $12, negative 12. Okay, again, I don't want my Y to be negative, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1 so that that Y becomes positive. So Y equals negative 12 times negative 1 gives me positive 12. Look at that. There is my answer, 5, 12. You can always plug it back in to make sure it works. Okay. Now, I just want to mention um, this wasn't the only way to get things to cancel, timesing by the negative 2. So if you found another way and it worked, awesome. I just happened to pick this way. There's more ways than one. Okay. All right. Now, I promised those were both one solution, right? But we need to know what this no solution and infinite solutions looks like. Okay. I happen to have that for you. Okay. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretend like I did that a lot more smoothly than I did. Okay, so these are your, this is your system of equations. Maybe you multiplied one of them by something to get your X's to cancel, right? Those are going to cancel. But then as you do it, oh, without you even trying, your Y's canceled too. Oh, so over here you're left with zero, nothing, everything canceled. And over here you're left with 13. Well, does zero equal 13? It does not. So that is not true. If that happens, there are no solutions. There is no number you can plug in for X and Y in both of these that will work for both of them. Okay, there's a bunch that'll work for this one and a bunch that'll work for this one, but they never collide. There's never the same one, okay? If we were to graph these, they would be parallel lines never crossing, okay? All right, what does the other one look like? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, similar start. You multiply this by something to get your Y's to cancel, say, and then without even trying, oh gosh, my X is canceled too. Oh gosh, and this canceled too. Oh, so I am left with zero equals zero. Is that true? Yes, it is. So that means infinite solutions, okay? Meaning whatever numbers you plug in for this one and work will work for this one, okay? If you're graphing these, it ends up being the same line. Okay, so that's what infinite solutions looks like. Okay, hopefully that makes sense and you're feeling good. Uh, go to bed, get your math homework done. Actually, reverse that. Get your math homework done and then go to bed um, and have dreams of math and our nightmares.